Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to talk to you about publishing your website to the internet. 90 Second Website Builder makes it pretty simple for you to publish your projects, your websites, and your pages to your web hosting account. But before I show you how the software does that, I want to explain to you the concept of publishing or uploading files to a web server. It's called FTP, File Transfer Protocol, and it's the one thing that sort of scares people away because it sounds pretty technical. Hopefully, this visual demonstration will help take some of the mystery out of how files get from your computer to your web host. And then we'll look at the software and show you how 90 Second Website Builder makes it really easy to do. First, let's imagine that this is your computer. And on your computer, you of course are developing your website. Now, in 90 Second Website Builder, your project is called a WBS file. And your entire website is stored inside that one project file whatever you called it, .wbs. Now behind the scenes on your computer, the software has also created what's called an assets folder. And it named it whatever you named your project. You never really need to go into this folder. In fact, you don't really need to know that it's there. But I'm telling you that the way the software manages your entire website is it stores everything inside this WBS file and it stores the images that you're saving, those images that you're dragging and dropping and putting onto your page. Well, the software stores them in this assets folder of the same name. So as you're working in a drag and drop environment, the software is storing things in the background. You don't really need to know about that assets folder, but it's there. Let's imagine that this box over here represents your web hosting account's server. A web server, of course, is the special computer that websites are stored on so they can be seen on the internet. Now to get the website that you've created with your software from your computer up to the web server, the two have to connect. That connection is called an FTP connection, or File Transfer Protocol. And that connection is something that your web hosting provider has sold to you. When you purchase web hosting service, that's what you're purchasing, a connection to a web server. The way you connect to that server is with what's called an FTP protocol. You have to have five things to connect to a server. You have to have the server's address, an IP address. Sometimes that's called a host name. Sometimes your web host will provide you with a series of numbers, an IP address, or they'll give you something that looks like ftp.yourdomain.com. Either way, the host name is the address to the server you're going to be connecting to. They'll also tell you what port to connect to, and almost every time that port is number 21. That's the universal port for connecting to an FTP server. Of course, you'll also have a unique FTP username and FTP password that your host will give you. It's usually the same username they've provided you for your control panel or your cPanel. And finally, they'll tell you where they want you to store your website on that server and that's called your remote folder. Now, for most web hosting companies, they call this folder the public HTML folder. Not every host does. For example, GoDaddy does something different, and a few other hosts do. But most web hosting companies make it simple and all call it the same thing. They call it the public HTML folder. And it's inside this folder, which is inside your account, which is on the server, is where your website files will be stored. So, how does your computer connect to the server and send files directly into that folder? Well, it's through this FTP login credential. Once you connect to the server with your username and password, it opens up a channel between your computer and the server. Now, for 90 Second Website Builder users, this process is really simple because once you provide the software with all of this FTP information, all you'll be doing is basically clicking a couple of buttons to publish your website. And when you do, 90 Second Website Builder sends all of the files it needs to up to your server and places them in the public HTML folder. So even though your entire website is stored inside this one file called a WBS folder, when you click publish in the software, what the software does is it begins to send those files up to the server, puts them inside the public HTML, thereby putting your website on the server or the internet. And it does all this pretty much at the click of a button. So that's basically how FTP works and really how it works with 90 Second Website Builder. So now let's take a look inside the software to see what it takes to set all this up. So here I am inside 90 Second Website Builder and I'm looking at a project here that I'm building for a painting company called Color Trend Painting and we're going to publish this website. Let me show you a uh, 
my site manager over here. I'm going to move it into the camera so you can see. This particular website, it has uh, these this set of pages, and then it's got some folders that also have pages in them. I've got a folder we're going to put a uh, mobile version of our website. So this is the structure of my particular website, Color Trend Painting. Several pages and some subfolders. And that's what I'm going to be publishing. Here's how we do it. The first thing we need to do is create a published location for our website. Now we only need to do that one time and then once that's set up we can publish anytime we want to with just a click of a button. But initially we need to set up the software to know where to publish this website. So let's walk through that. So to do that I'm going to pull up the publish feature. A couple of ways I can do that. I can go to file, publish, or I could go up to this little icon up here and just click on that. It's the same thing as going file publish and it brings up this dialog. Now I've already created a location for this website but I'm going to show you how I did it. Before this existed I would have to create that location by clicking the new button and now I'm ready to create a location that the software is going to store and remember for publishing this website. The first thing I'll do is select FTP server because remember we want to publish to the remote server, the web hosting server at our hosting account and I just simply fill in this information. Now I'm going to cancel out of here because I've already done one so let me show you. My color trend painting published location looks like this. Again I chose FTP server. I called it color trend painting. You can call it whatever you want. This makes sense because this is what's going to show up in my pull down box right here when I go to look for this location later when I want to publish again. And then of course the URL. This is kind of handy because if I put this here it gives me kind of a quick link to the website so I can go right to it to check on it. Now this information is the information that we get from our host. Remember the IP address or the host name is a number like this. Now your host may give you an FTP address that would look something like ftp.yourdomain.com. That's fine to use if that's what your host gives you. If they also give you an IP address you can use one or the other. If you have a choice it's usually best to use the IP address number. You'll have fewer problems but it's okay to use the FTP address. So either way you need the address to the host or the host name to go here. The universal port for FTP is almost always 21. Probably 99.9% .9 of the time this number is going to be 21. But again your host will be glad to tell you what that number is. The username and password is of course the username and password that was given to you by your host for your cPanel or your FTP login. They're usually the same thing. So this is the username and password for this account. And then in my case I'm publishing to a remote folder called public underscore HTML. And it needs to look just like this. This forward slash public underscore HTML. For most of you this is what it will be. However not every host uses this format. If you are using GoDaddy for example you would just simply have a forward slash or some other hosts use other names for that remote folder. But for the most part they use public HTML. If you're publishing to what's called an add-on domain this location will look slightly different and there's a special video about add-on domain so I won't go into that here but if you are using add-on domains you're going to want to go watch that video. If you don't know what an add-on domain is don't worry about it. That may not apply to you. So again for most of us it's going to look just like this. These settings that come from our host are very important. Now before we save this published location we want to test it. So we have a little test button. And all this does is this just makes sure that we've got the right address, the right username, and the right password. Because if we have just one thing out of place, even one little dot or one missing character, well it just won't publish of course. And so it's nice to test to make sure we at least got that right. So I click test and it tells me I've successfully connected to the server. This is good news because that means my server address, username, and password are correct. So that's good. So basically I'm ready to save this. What I just did in setting that up I don't ever have to do again for this website. This website will now always be able to be published to with just a couple of clicks because the software is going to remember this FTP location. So if that was a little bit tricky for you or a little bit involved the good news is you only have to do it once for each website. Now I happen to be working on a lot of websites. Maybe you're only working on one but in my case I've been doing this for a while so I have a lot of website locations in here. So I have to have a location for every website. Well that's because every website's stored at a different place. Might even be a different host or a different part of the server or a different account on the server. So every website has its own location and the color trend painting is this one. From here on out when I'm ready to publish I don't have to go through all that. All I have to do is hit the publish button and then bring up this window and click publish and the website will publish. Let me back out of here just to show you what would normally happen now that the location is already set up. Every time I want to publish my website, very simple step. All I have to do is hit the publish button 
it brings up this. Click Publish and watch what happens. The software is actually giving me a little log file of telling me exactly what it's doing. And I'm actually publishing a lot of stuff. This website happens to have a lot of images, has some subfolders. Those subfolders have image, images in them as well. So it takes a few minutes, as you can see. But what's great is if there were ever any errors or something got hung up, this log file is great to go back through so I can see if it missed something or if there was some kind of error message that the server sent me. So this is kind of nice to have. But you can see the progress of the website right here. This is taking a few minutes because I haven't ever published it yet. So I'm publishing everything all at once. So let's just give it a minute and let it finish publishing so you can see what happens when it's all done here. Okay, there. Now again, that can take a few minutes depending on how many files you're publishing and how big your website is. But the website successfully published, that's a good thing to see. I can scroll back through here. You could save this log if you really want to. You can copy this. Well, you usually don't need to. But it just told me I actually uploaded almost 4,000 files. So you can see why it took a few minutes. I'm all done. If I want to check it, here's a shortcut to my website. Remember I put that URL in my settings. So by clicking this, I can go right to the website online. It opens up a browser. This is not the same as preview. I'm actually going online. It's opened up a browser and taken me to the internet and I can see my website is online showing up just fine. So now let's talk about what happens when you publish and republish. A lot of times people get worried about publishing their website because they think once they build their website, then they publish it and they never publish again. You need to understand that publishing is actually part of the design process. Sometimes I'll publish my website or a certain page on my website several times a day as I'm working on it. You can publish and republish all you want. You don't have to worry about doing that. When you publish your website, you are overwriting whatever files were there. The old files will get overwritten by the new ones, and that's part of the design process. Also, when you publish, you don't have to republish the entire website. I don't have to publish all 4,000 files every time I make a change to my website. I can just publish one file if I want to. Let me show you how to do that. I click the Publish button, select the location I want to publish to, and of course, this is Color Trend, and I can tell the software, yes, publish the entire website, or I can say, I just want you to publish a particular page, a selected page. When I click this, I can go select a page in my file structure and say, I just want to publish the about page because maybe I, I changed the phone number or fixed a typo on that page. Well, I can just publish that page. Click OK. And then by clicking publish, it would republish this page and all of the files associated with that page. There's a lot of images on that page. I don't have to publish all the files associated with that page. I can just publish that page's HTML only. How do I do that? Well, by selecting this. Here I've told the software, I want you to just publish one page, and I just want you to publish the HTML page only. Don't have to republish all the images every time, because if I haven't made any changes to them, there's no reason to wait for that. So you see, you have a lot of flexibility in how much you publish. Here are some other selections. Besides the selected page, if that page had any subpages, mine don't, but if it did, I could publish the selected page and all the subpages under it. Or I could just publish the pages that are currently open on my canvas. Right now, you can see up at the top, I only have two pages open, the index and the about. Even though I have several pages on this website, I can just publish the ones that I'm currently working on, these two. If I publish now, I would just publish these two pages, the ones currently open. And again, I can decide if I just want to publish the pages or all of the files associated with them. Or in fact, here's another choice, just the files that have been changed since the last time I published because the software keeps track of that. Here's some other options. I can publish pages that are using the master page master frame feature if I want to. And master pages are covered in another video if you don't know what that is. So here's the point. You have control over how much gets published. And again, don't worry about publishing and republishing as many times as you want to. The first time, you're going to probably want to publish your entire website and all of the files associated with it. And then your subsequent publishings will just be maybe those pages that you've changed or maybe just a set of pages that you've changed. And it's easy to do because all you'll be doing is clicking the Publish button, making your selection, and then clicking this Publish button, and you're done. That's really all there is to publishing with 90 Second Website Builder. When people have trouble publishing almost every time, it has to do with these settings. I would say probably 99% of the time, in fact, publishing problems have to do with whether these settings are correct or unless they're having a problem with their host or their server. That can happen too. But a lot of times the username or password will be wrong. Most times the remote folder is wrong. But if you are sure about these and you've tested them, you shouldn't have any problem getting your website published. Hopefully that will get you started in knowing how to get your website from your computer onto your web hosting account so it can be seen on the internet.